playing of our national anthem tonight from Cantrell Stadium as we welcome everybody in to the ITG next game of the week between the Valdosta Wildcats and the McEachern Indians. Welcome in, everybody. I'm Phil Jones. I'm going to be your play-by-play -play man tonight all night long for this exciting Class 7A matchup between these two traditional state powers, Valdosta and McEachern. Now, for some of you that have been following the, the Cats and the Indians for quite a while, tonight's game is the 25th anniversary of the 1998 state championship game played down at Cleveland Field back in 98, a game that was 7-7 that turned into a 21-7 Valdosta lead. I think McEachern went into that game undefeated. I think they were had gone undefeated all season long and into the playoffs, but that all changed, of course, that night in South Georgia. These two teams actually have met, in addition to that game, six times, and McEachern, 0-6 all-time against the Valdosta Wildcats. So the homestanding Indians would love nothing more than to get that first win in this series between these two teams. We want to thank everybody for watching tonight. want to encourage everybody also for checking in tonight and offering up your comments. If you're new to the, the broadcast, we do an ITG Next Game of the Week around the state every Friday night bringing you some of the best high school football around. And we want to encourage everybody to chat it up with us tonight as we love to interact with you guys, converse with you guys. I'll be doing that. I'll be checking out your comments throughout the game in addition to bringing you the play-by-play. -play. So it's very much interactive. So let me hear where you're checking in from tonight. I love to see where everybody's watching the game tonight, whether you're an Indian alum a Valdosta alum, or just a fan of either of the teams. We'd love to hear that. So now you're not going to find any other broadcast or any other stream that gets you as much interaction as we do here with ITG Next. From time to time, I'll look down and see who all is watching tonight. And again, let me know where you're checking out the game from tonight. I know we have people usually all over the country that watch the game here at ITG Next. It is the beauty of of the internet and the beauty of what we do here at ITG Next. Dalton Smith checking in, says, what's up, Phil? Nathan Sloan <laughs> says, go back, go. That's the other game, Nathan. Jarrett Northcutt is checking in from down in Valdosta, home of the Cats. Got a lot of folks watching. My buddy Jim Blair checking game out tonight. There's my buddy Mike Sorensen checking it out tonight. What's up, Mike? Edwina Braswell says, let's go, Cats. So let me hear from you guys tonight as we go forward. So a couple of interesting tidbits about these two teams. McKeesha coming into the game one and four. Valdosta, you can reverse that, 4-1 and one on the year. Of course, a game that we were at up in Massillon, Ohio. Now, we weren't able to bring you the stream, but we were there getting locker room. You, matter of fact, you guys can go to ITG Next and see all the uh, background video that we got at the Valdosta locker room, the Massillon locker room. We got great interviews with both head coaches, Coach Shelton Felton, and the head coach of the uh, Massillon Tigers. It was a big night up there. You know, that is really the, the birthplace of high school football. It was a great game. It was a tough night for the Cats. But since then, Valdosta has reeled off four in a row, defeating Cook, Banneker, Warner Robins, and last week, Deerfield Beach out of Florida. For McEachern, they started the season off in the Corky Kell Dave Hunter Classic, led Brookwood by a couple of touchdowns, and then bad luck. Lady Luck has certainly thumbed her nose at the Indians this year. Their main running back went down in that game, Jerry on J.J. Campbell, with a knee injury. And I tell you, he's a lot of their offense. And once they lost him, the game was lost. Brookwood would come back to defeat the Indians in that one, 21-20. After that, been a tough sledding for McEacher. 
they were losing week two. That was a game that we brought you guys against Langston Hughes, a game that McEachern actually got out to a lead, nine to nothing lead, but then lost their number two running back, Demarcus Cleveland. He went down with a knee injury. In fact, he is still out. That was a season-ending knee injury. However, their number one running back who was injured in the Dave Hunter Corky Hill Classic, Jerry on J.J. Campbell, is back tonight. In fact, he came back last week in what was McEachern's first win of the year against Tucker, 49-7 victory against Tucker. So McEachern able to find some offense. In fact, they found a lot of offense last week. I can tell you that McEachern made some internal changes as far as their play callers, change coordinators, and they brought a new coach. Well, they didn't bring a new coach in. He was already on staff, but they changed basically just some, some personnel around, did Kareem Reed, the head coach. And at least for one week last week, it worked wonders against Tucker. Now, the Tucker defense, and apologies to our friends at Tucker, not anything like the Valdosta defense. In fact, you're not going to find many defenses around anywhere in the state of Georgia like this Valdosta defense. They are the Iron Curtain defense of high school football, led by Eric Brantley, who, and I say this with all of the respect and, and admiration, is an absolute beast of a defensive lineman. I talk to high school coaches and what I do. You guys know I lot of uh, – know a lot of coaches around the state and these coaches always talk about Eric Brantley's hands he's got vicious and quick hands and that's how he's able to drive off of offensive linemen and I'm sure we're going to probably be calling his number a good bit tonight in this one these two teams met last year it was in Valdosta 21-14 win for McEachern. And again, as I mentioned earlier, tonight's celebrating the 25th anniversary of the 1998 state championship game. Both teams making their way onto the field as we just saw the Cats take the field. And now here come the Indians also making their way onto the field here. Both teams coming from the north end zone. We're going to have a good one here for you tonight, we hope. McEachern, again, our second look at the Indians this year. This will be our first look at the Cats this year here on ITG Next. Going to be bringing you quality games all season long, guys. We'll be bringing you the Lowndes High Vikings coming up, Carrollton and East Coweta in a couple of weeks, Lowndes Richmond Hill coming up. Going to bring you the Rome Wolves later in the season and some other exciting games that we've got on tap. Talking to some schools now about bringing you some great high school football, and I'll bring you up to speed on all the conversations and, and who we decide on once we get that figured out coming this week. We want to thank our friends at Georgia Farm Bureau Insurance as well as Baker Sports. Baker Sports wants to welcome all football fanatics. Friday Night Lights 2023 is here. Brought to you by Baker Sports and Pro Sports. Together, serve as your one-stop destination for top-quality sports equipment. Whether you're a player or a passionate fan, Baker's has got you covered. Remember, call Baker's at 904-388-8126 for all your sporting good needs. Now, get ready to enjoy this gridiron spectacle of a game as we get ready to tee it up. So, we're going to see Valdosta kicking it off for the Cats. Number 95, Franklin Garcia tees it up. Going to be taken back there inside the 20-yard line. Bringing it across the 30 is the McEachern return man. Return that time by number 21, Jacoby Fox. He's the senior wideout and kick returner. And he's going to give McEachern first and 10. Just inside their own 30-yard line. Now they'll actually spot it right at the 30. All right, so now I can tell you a name we're going to be calling tonight, number 10, Jerry on J.J. Campbell. He's going to be their go-to guy tonight. 
In fact, he's lined up off the right hip of Jaden Kenny, the quarterback. Cats with three down line, and they're going to sneak up an end off the near side. And nothing doing. John Tavius McGriff, the senior in, came up there and made the stop. Before Campbell could even get back to the deep, or the offensive line, rather. They're going to lose about three and a half, four yards on the play. Valdosta already displaying that quickness on defense. Second and long for McEachin. We're just underway here at Cantrell Stadium. Another handoff left side. Nothing doing. May have got back to the line of scrimmage, and that's about it. Tackle made that time by number 17. I believe that's Nicobe Brown. McEachern in third and long, not what you want to be in with this Valdosta defense. Probably going to be pinning their ears back here. McEachern going to send three receivers out here to the near side. Got a man in the slot. Kenny takes the snap, looks, looks. Now he's going to step up and he's going to be sacked. Kenny had nowhere to go with it. And Eric Brantley. Making the quarterback sack. And I mentioned before the game started, we're going to be calling Eric Brantley's name a lot tonight. And we call it right here on the first series. So McEacher not able to get anything going offensively. They'll go three and out. And now McEacher going to have to punt it away. And Valdosta should come away with pretty good field position here. Back deep to return this one. Marcus Williams. <clears throat> McEachern going to be punting this one away from in their own territory. Jonathan Rodriguez, we saw him kick a 48-yarder in the Hughes game. High snap. Just gets it off. Line drive punt. Going to take a McEachern roll and roll down to about the 32-yard line. And that's where we're going to see Valdosta go on offense first tier tonight. No score just underway from Cantrell Stadium. We're in the catbird seat, high atop the home side here at McEachern's beautiful facility, one of the most beautiful football facilities I've ever been, and I've been in a, long, a lot of them. All right, so we're going to see the Cats now on offense for the first time tonight. So we've seen Todd Robinson and Gene Prince both to, uh, this season. Going to see Robinson start the game at quarterback. Felt off to two receivers to either side. Robinson going to take the snap, handoff. Right up the middle. Getting the carry that time. That's Dalen Sims. Guys, you got to bear with me on these double numbers. The only problem when you've got a roster as big as Valdosta, you got these double numbers, and I think that was actually Deron Foster. So I kind of have to guess <laughs> when we got two numbers as to who's got it. Foster the carry. Play action. Robinson going to keep it, go across the right side. We'll get a couple of yards before a host of blue shirts make the tackle. I saw Robinson in the Wintersville Classic last year, and he impressed me so much. I wrote a story. You guys can check it out at ITG Next Georgia. I wrote a story about this young man. He was so impressive to me in that Wintersville Classic that uh, Valdosta won last year that I was like, man, this there is great things on the horizon for Robinson. You guys remember he got hurt in the Massillon game. Third down, handoff, nothing doing. Valdosta is going to lose about two yards, so the Cats are going to go three and out on their first offensive possession. So both teams, three and out, both teams, running three plays and actually losing yardage. Andy Patterson says, I'm on Facebook, but I can't watch the game. So you should be here, uh, Andy. So here's Valdosta now, going to punt it away. 
High spiraling punt. Going to be taken. Fair catch called for and made back at the 26 27 yard line. And that's where Valda, or I'm sorry, McEachern is going to put it in play for their second offensive possession of the night. Let me know if you guys are watching and where you're watching from. Guys, want to hear from you. What do you think so far? Not much offense from either side. Stephen Tate watching the game tonight. What's up, Stephen? Makia Small is watching it in Mississippi. I love it. All right, so we're going to see Makia now. That will be their uh, all, second offensive possession of the night. And no score. Both teams with the ball. Campbell, J.J. Campbell, right up the middle. He'll take it for two, three yards maybe. Edward Lazaroff watching from Steubenville, Ohio. I love it. Second down seven. They give him three yards on that last carry. Now McEachern slowing it down a little bit. Play clock now under 15 seconds. McEachern still. Now they're up to the line. Seven seconds on the play clock. They'll have to hurry here to get this one off. Kenny takes the snap. Looks, throws, incomplete. He had a defender right in his face as he was trying to throw the football. And that may have altered the direction of the ball. So it's going to fall incomplete. So third down and seven. We're just underway. Seven minutes to go in the first quarter. No score. Neither offense able to do much of anything so far here tonight. All right, so here's McEacher now, third down and long, third and seven. They've got it at their own 30-yard line, no score. Kenny takes the snap, wants to throw, going to step up in the pocket. Now he's going to, I thought he was going to run for it. He'll throw first down. I thought he went past the line of scrimmage, and he did. I think Kenny went way past the line of scrimmage. So he's going to get called for an illegal forward pass. He probably should have taken off and just ran that ball. I couldn't believe it when he threw it, but I'm sure that's what we're going to get here. Now, we'll check the call, but I think I'm right. Let's check the white hat. That's exactly what we've got. The illegal forward pass. So, Kenny was well past the line of scrimmage when he threw that. And the problem with that is, if you're a McEachern fan, you don't have the luxury of replaying the down. That's going to Hurt in a couple of ways. Not only do you not get the first down, but you're going to lose the down. So that means McEachern's going to have to punt it away. Latoisha, Patrice Demps is watching from Valdosta. Says, go Cats. Wakefield number 58 is her guy. All right, so McEachern now, although they did pass it for enough of the first down, Kenny way past the line of scrimmage. So Rodriguez is going to have to punt this one away. Low snap, it rolls to him. He just was able to get it off. Valdosta may have gotten a piece of the football. I don't know, but fair catch going to be made right at midfield. And so Valdosta will have good field position right at midfield. Ball right at the 50 is where the fair catch was made by Marcus Williams. Gatch looking good, man, in that all white. White tops, white bottoms, the traditional colors of the winningest football team in the country, the Valdosta Wildcats. Todd Robinson, Deron Foster is his running back. Now he'll come up off the left head of Robinson, and he'll take it right side. A little bit of running room on that right side, about five-yard gain taken to the 45. Valdosta sticking it, uh, staying on the ground here. Second down, five. Now we're going to see Gene Pr or Prince Gene for the first time tonight at quarterback. He'll take the snap. Look, quick toss, complete. Wide receiver screen. He's got it, taking it inside the 35 to the 34. Pass complete 
to number two, Todd Robinson, who they split out wide that time, moved him from quarterback to the wide receiver position, taking advantage of his speed. So now here's Valdosta. They want to go with a little bit of tempo here. Two receivers far side, one here to the near side. we got Robinson back in the game now at quarterback. Foster, the running back. Foster's going to get it, trying to go off right tackle. He'll try to get back to the middle, and there's nothing there. He's going to lose a yard. My buddy Rosser Sutherland watching from Marietta. <laughs> Rosser said he just couldn't bring himself to come to the rival. I got you, brother. All right, so here's the Cats now. A little bit of momentum. Second down and 10. We're about 5-13 to go in the first quarter. No score. Robinson, quick toss. Oh, it bounces off the receiver's hands. And it's going to fall incomplete. So incomplete, it hit the receiver in the hands. It bounced out. We almost had a great catch on a diving attempt by Nicobe Brown, but he couldn't come up with it off the turf. So here's Valdosta, third down. We'll call it about 11. Two receivers split out to either side. Robinson going to look over at Shelton Felton and the staff. He's got a couple of coaches over there giving calls, giving hand signals. One of those, or at least two, one of those is a decoy. One's the real call. Foster going to move up the right hip of Robinson. Robinson looks, being chased out of the pocket, going to throw it out here in the flats. It's complete. But a couple of McEachern Indians are out there to knock him down, way short of the first down. Pass was complete that time to number five, Jordan Gatlin, the senior. But it's going to be short of the first down. Now, so if you're Valdosta, what do you do here? You're kind of in no man's land. But it looks like Sheldon Felton says, let's punt it away. Or at least that's what they're going to show. Let's see here with Valdosta. See if Shelton Felton's got any riverboat gambler in him here. Nope, going to punt this one away, and I don't blame him. Going to try to pin him back deep. It is a high short punt. Going to take a Valdosta roll, though, and going to be down at the 11-yard line. So Valdosta not able to do anything with their second offensive possession tonight. And so McEachern will go back on offense. No score, 4.45 to go. In the first quarter, guys, I want to tell you about our friends at Georgia Farm Bureau Insurance. Remember, there is a Georgia Farm Bureau Insurance agent near you. Go to their website at www.gfbinsurance.com, and you can click on the zip code or the city that you are near, and you'll find an agent that can help you with any and all of your insurance needs. That's Georgia Farm Bureau Insurance. Big thanks to them and Baker Sports, our sponsors of tonight's game and our games all year long here at ITG Next. Nothing doing. Had great backside speed pursuit that time from the Kobe Brown. Boy, that's Valdos defense just so quick. Second down, Kenny looks, throws out in the flat. It's complete. He'll make one man miss. Will the receiver going to take it up to about the 15-yard line? Now they'll spot it, I think, at the 14. So going to bring up third down and about eight needed for the first. McEachern got to get it up to the 22 for a first down. No score, 330, 329, 328. Left to go in the first quarter, no score. Play clock now, 5-4. McEachern not going to be able to get this one off. They'll have to take a timeout or they're going to get a delay a game. Now, they just are able to get it off. Throw, near side, incomplete. McEachern had to rush that one. I don't know if that really had anything to do with the play going incomplete or not, but 
pass is going to sail over the head of the intended receiver, Cam Trailer. So not much of anything from either team so far able to move the football. And we're going to see McEachern in yet another punting situation. So now what you've got so far is a battle of field position, and that may be what ultimately gets the first team on the board. McEachern pinned deep in their own territory. Rodriguez going to have to get a big punt off. High punt. Taken at the 49. Fair catch called for there. Marcus Williams on the fair catch. And so Valdosta now will go back on offense. Their third offensive possession of the night. Guys, let me know where you're checking in uh, from tonight. Thanks so much for checking out our live stream. Uh, I see where you guys are talking about some freeze, and we'll see if we can get that fixed up for you. So here goes Valdosta now. Two receivers, far side, a man on the wing. Robinson is going to keep it around this left end. He'll take it for about five to the 45. Doris Christopher says, what's the score? Nothing doing so far. 2.51 to go, Doris. No score. Late in the first quarter. Valdosta with the football. Second down and five. Robinson going to hand it. Right side. Deron Foster going to take it. For about three and a half, four yards, and that's going to give Valdosta a third down and one. Well, <laughs> our yard man is uh, all over the place over there. I believe it's third and one. Third and one, 213, 212, 211 to go. Big play here. Really the first big play of the night for either offense. Valdos is going to put the big jumbo package up. Going to go into the Wildcat with Brantley taking the direct snap. He'll have the first down over the 40, taking it to the 38. was not Todd Robinson. That was Eric Brantley on the direct snap. But anyway, <laughs> B.A. man got it wrong. All right, now we got Robinson back in there. Valdosta, new set of downs. First and 10. Here's Valdosta now showing a little bit of life and really the first sign of life from either offense tonight. Valdosta with the first down. 144 to go in the first. No score, but here come the Cats. We have an offsides on the defense now. That'll move it up five yards, and that'll give Valdosta first and five. All right, so here's Valdosta now. First down and five. Robinson takes. Look, going to throw it long. Got a man open down there, and he overshot him. Robinson had a receiver running open, but he overshot him incomplete. Corey Ra is watching all the way from Albuquerque, New Mexico. I love it. Okay, so Tierra Stoney tells me the return catch was Eli Lewis. He puts on number 99 when he does the returns, but he's number eight on offense. That can get a little confusing, but thank you for that. Robinson just able to get it off before he was sacked. Pass complete to Foster. Going to take it to the, well, back to the 35. But Robinson did a good job that time of avoiding the sack. All right, so here we go. Third down and seven. Cats, three receivers and a bunch on that far side. One here to the near side. Robinson looks here to the near side. Going to throw it long down the field and nobody there. Well, there was somebody there, but he was about five yards overthrown. That was Prince Gene he was trying to go for. Brings up 
So it's going to bring up a fourth down. So what was a pretty promising Valdosta drive is going to go for naught. But let's see if Valdosta decides to punt it away, and they will. Going to try to pin him deep. This one's going to get off the side of his foot. Punter hit it off the side of his foot that time. Greg Roper. Sorry about the problems tonight, guys. Let's see if we can get these things fixed for you. Mr. Producer working on it, I'm sure. Hang in there with us, guys. At least if you can hear me, that's good news. I'll make you feel like you're right here. How about that? All right. Now, so Valdosta, what looked like a promising drive offensively, going to go for not. And now McEachern going to go back on offense. Two receivers, far side, one here to the near side. And a handoff, and there's nothing to it. Brantley was in the backfield as soon as the ball carrier got the ball. And how many times have we heard that description of an Eric Brantley defensive play? Great day. Guys, let me know if you can uh, see our stream. Give me some feedback here on how we're doing as we come to the end of the first quarter. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of the first quarter. With your score, Valdosta nothing, McEachern nothing. Not much offense. Defense has been the name of the game so far tonight in this one. Guys, want to thank our friends. Again, at Baker Sports in Georgia, Farm Bureau Insurance. Baker Sports and Pro Sports are proud to be the presenting sponsor between McEachern and Valdosta tonight, athletes and fans alike. Between Bakers and Pro Sports, you can get your gear covered from cheerleading to football to fans. Bakers is a one-stop shop for top quality sports apparel and equipment. Call Bakers today at 904-388-8126. For all your sporting good needs. And want to thank our friends at Georgia Farm Bureau Insurance. Georgia Farm Bureau Insurance agents offer home, auto, life, farm insurance, and renter's insurance, and a lot more. Guys, to find an agent near you, it's real easy. Go to their website, gfbinsurance.com. That's www.gfbinsurance.com. Phil Jones with you. I teach you next game of the week. Between the Cats and McEachern, no score, end of the first quarter. Jeff Durham, everything looks great on my end. Great job, guys. Jeff, thanks so much for that, buddy. All right, here we go, getting ready to start the second quarter, and we've got penalty flags. Offsides on Valdosta. That'll move it up five for McEachern. So that'll move it up five. Now McEachern. They have it first down and five at the 25. No score will just underwin the second quarter. Kenny. It is the quarterback, two receivers, far side one here to the near side for the Indians. Snap to Kenny, looks, throws, incomplete. Quick pass, got great coverage over here by the Cats. Pass was intended over here on the McEachern side for Caden Peterson, but Valdosta, great coverage defensively. So third down now for the Indians. Not much offense from McEachern so far. A 
Here's the snap to Kenny. Looks. Going to throw it long. Got a man out there, and he overshot him. Receiver had a step on the defensive back. Both quarterbacks, though, not very accurate here in the early going. Maybe getting some of these early game jitters out of their system. Mike Sorensen, buddy, thanks for the kind words. Mike Sorensen, thanks ITG Next and your sponsors for bringing us free high school football. Absolutely, Michael. Thank you for the kind words, buddy. So here's McEacher now, going to have to punt it away. Valdosta with a heavy rush, long, high punt. McEachern gets down there before the punt came down. What? I know we got two great punters. And to be honest with you, they have been the stars of this game tonight. Tell me who the number 99 guy is. Somebody told me a while ago, he switches jerseys. But I want to make sure that I identify that young man correctly when he's back there receiving the punt. All right, so here we go. Now, Valdez is going to go back on offense. No score. 11-43. We're just underway in the second quarter. Coming to you live tonight from Cantrell Stadium. Handoff. Look out. Running room for Foster. Right up the middle. There he goes. The first big play of the night for either team. It's a big play for Foster. Darren Foster taking it to the 35. And here comes Valdosta. Now they want to go with some tempo. Wouldn't be surprised to see him keep feeding it. Nope. Play action now. I thought they would keep giving it to him, but instead, Prince Gene, a run pass option that time, took it and kept it left side, no gain. Second down. Throw far side, incomplete. That was Prince Gene who threw that one. So now, Brent English, man, thank you for the uh, the kind words there, brother. All right, Tierra Stoney said, Eli Lewis is my baby. Okay, so let me write that down. Eli Lewis. Thank you for that. I appreciate that. Mom, God, man, can't make mamas mad. <laughs> That's for sure. Got to make sure we identify their boys correctly. All right, here's a heavy rush now by McEachern. Robinson trying to get out of there, and he's going to be brought down. Back at around the original line of scrimmage. So Valdosta not able to do anything offensively after a big run by Foster. Looked like it was going to get Valdosta in business or put Valdosta in business in deep in McEachern territory, but they are not able to do anything with it. And so here's Valdosta now going to have to punt it away again. You got a feeling that one of these punts are going to fake it. That's just my – oh, they're going to get a roughing the punter, I would guess. No, the referee's going to call it off. And it's going to be another shanked punt. I thought we were going to get a roughing the punter, but the referee, the back judge there, immediately said no. He waved it off. That's right, Tierra Stoney. <laughs> she gives me the, the laughing emojis. So, guys, what do you think if you're a Valdosta fan? What do you think about your team so far? Great defense, but no offense. Really, McEachern, you can say the same thing. McEachern's defense has stepped up here, guys. Really not much of any offense tonight. 10-24, let's go back to McEachern on offense now. No score. A game that has been completely dominated by the defense tonight. We've got a false start on McEachern. Okay, so eight, Eli Lewis on Valdosta, eight on defense is safety, Jalon Copeland. Yeah, that can get confusing, but thank you all for clearing that up for me. First and 15, McEachern going to try to find something on the ground, and there's nothing there except big zero. Eric Brantley, great day. (laughs) 
a man among boys out there is what Brantley looks like. My goodness. Second and 17 with the penalty and the loss there. It's going to make second and forever. Second and all stale for McEacher. Kenny almost intercepted. Legend Hallman had his hands on it, couldn't quite bring it in. So it's going to bring up now a third down and long. Again, no offense from really either team. Valdosta has shown signs of being able to move the football, but McEacher not really much of anything. Going to try to get Kenny now on the outside. Throws incomplete. Just that never had a chance. We got a penalty flag now. Check the call. I don't know if that's a defensive hold. That's usually where you get something where that flag was thrown. But we're going to see what we get. Checking out the white hat as he comes over to give us the call. Well, it wasn't what I thought. I, th I think it was simply a sideline warning, which is next to nothing. So, goes for nothing. Going to be McEacher now punting it away. And he just gets this one off. Eli Lewis back there. He's been a busy man tonight, has Lewis, and he'll make the fair catch. And he's made almost every fair catch, guys, right at midfield. Here's another one. For Lewis, right at the 49. So Valdosta has had really good field position. They just haven't been able to capitalize. So here we go now. The Cats going to take over. First and 10 of their own 49. No score. 9.28 to go in the first half. You're watching the ITG next game of the week. Phil Jones with you on the play-by-play. -play. Cats coming out. Three receivers, far side, one on the near side. Robinson going to take, going to hand it right up the middle. That's Foster on the carry. We'll have about four. Valdosta now wants to go with tempo. They're back up to the line, no huddle. Three receivers far side, one on the near side again. Play action, throws. Man, wide open there. Complete. Just a little button hook route. Complete. And now Valdosta with the – First down. So here's Katz now going to try to get something motivated with this offense with some tempo. Foster going to get the carry. They got a little something going here now. Short run, about three or four yards from Foster. If I'm Valdos and I'm Shelton Felton, I just keep feeding it to Foster. Get something going here by running the football. It's called feeding the beast. Let Foster get warmed up. That's exactly what they'll do. And there he goes. That's, that's all they need to do. Three, four chunks at a time. Wear down the McEachern defense. Run the football. Pick up first downs. Something that neither team has been able to do tonight. Third down here for the Cats. Going to give it to Foster again. Nice run. Taking it to the 25. That's going to be enough for a first down. So here comes Valdosta. They found a winning formula here. It comes with eight minutes to go in the first half. No score, but here come the Cats threatening. Sharon Manning Gase is running. Sharon, I think you're right. And that's exactly what they're going to do. Jordan Gatlin gets it that time off the left side. Gain of about four. Here's the Cats now. They want to go with some tempo. Robinson back in the game at quarterback. Going to give it to Gatlin again. Looks left side. He'll squirt through there for a couple. Going to bring up third down. A 
Todd Daniel says, run the rock. That's exactly what you do. That's really what football was built on. All right, big play here for Valdos, and really a big play for McEachin. Big play for both teams here. Third down. Robinson going to roll. Look, look, throws. Overshot his man. Incomplete. So here's Valdos now fourth down. So what was a promising drive there will stall. Let's see if the Cats going to go for a long field goal here. The hold will come at the 20. Six. It'll be a 36-yard field goal attempt by Franklin Garcia. Robinson will hold at the 26. 36-yard field goal to try to give the Cats the first lead of the night. The kick is on its way. It's no good. No good. Garcia's kick is going to fall short. So the Valdosta offense that was looking promising, will stall at the 26. So Valdosta will give it back to McEacher. No score. We're down to 6.59 to go in the first half. No score. Valdosta McEacher, 25th anniversary of the 1998 state championship game between these two teams at Cleveland Field many years ago. All right, so let's see if McEachern now. We saw Valdosta with a little bit of offense there. Let's see if McEachern can find something here. Boy, they have not been able to do much of anything so far, either running it or throwing it. Kenny, the quarterback, takes the snap, looks, throws. Incomplete, never had a chance. I don't think the receiver even saw it. Nathan Sloan said Cedar Grove score. So that's that Cedar Grove Conquit game. I tell you, guys, I've been talking about this season so far. What's going on? I mean, you got Cedar Grove struggling, and they have been able to – I mean, they've had the, the rock – Iron Rock – here's a nice run by McEacher on the far side. They've had the Iron Rock defense has McEacher – I'm sorry, has uh, Cedar Grove over the last few years. That's how they've won four state championships in the last seven years. I mean, you've got ELCA, a state power, that is just getting throttled this year. I mean, what's up with Thomasville? All those starters coming back from last year's quarterfinal team. Uh, it's just a baffling, a baffling deal. Third down, and McEachern going to go for a first down here. Campbell, so now McEachern, I think that's their first first down of the night. And here's McEachern. Now they find a little bit of offense here. 6.07 to go in the first half. No score. Both teams unable to move the football in the first half. Tina Cummings, can we see the halftime show? Yes, we will show that to you at the half while yours truly takes a break. <laughs> Hand off right side. He'll go for about two or three. So I stand the whole game. Kind of helps me stay in the feel of the game, kind of feel the energy of the game. I mean, my goodness, I, I sat for four and a half hours driving up here. Well yeah, well, yeah, that's what I meant. I mean, driving up here. I sat, though, is what I'm saying. <laughs> Vicki Spencer says she can't see the game. Let's see what we can do to rectify that. Fumble. Kenny going to pick it up, going to throw it. Got a man wide open out there in the flash. He's streaking down the far sideline. McEachern, 30, 25, 10, 5. Touchdown, Indians. McEachern is struck for the first score of the night. Indians go up six to nothing. Unbelievable. <laughs> Guys, it was a bad snap. It rolled on the ground. 
to Jadon Kinney. He picked it up. It looked like he was going to run it. Garcia now to try the point after. His kick is up. It is good. So it looked like Kenny, Jadon Kenny, was going to pick it up and run it. Instead, he tossed it out to a receiver in the flat who was wide open. And he took it all the way for the touchdown. And McEachern. <laughs> McEachern is going on. Just got him just laughing because I just saw somebody's uh, comment here that is bad, bad, bad word. <laughs> wow. I did not see that coming. Great day. What a shocker that was. But McEachern goes up. Seven to nothing. Wow, what a play. So Valdosta now, uh, and I would say they are shocked. Well, that defense playing lights out and almost a busted play, but McEachern able to find a long touchdown. The Indians go up seven to nothing, under five minutes to go in the first half. Here's Rodriguez going to put a foot into it. And he'll drive this one into and out of the end zone. So we're going to see Valdosta now go on offense. First and 10, they'll have it at their own 25. And we'll see the Cats go back on offense now. The 20-yard line. Troy Black says, put the foot on the gas, please. Harriet Webb says, I'm shocked. All right, so here we go. Let's see if Valdosta is going to air it out here. They'll stick to the run off the left side. Nice gain that time from Prince Gene. He'll take it for about six. Guys, a lot of game left. Remember that last possession, you saw Valdosta really move the football. If I'm Valdosta, I keep it on the ground. You've had success when you run the football. I just keep it on the ground and churn it out. Let's see if that's what the Cats will do. They'll run it. Maybe a yard. Jordan Gatlin on the carry. Brent English says if they would stick to the run, it'd be a tied game right now. You may be right. Valdosta has really run the football with some authority in this first half. We're down under three minutes to go in the first half. Big play for the Cats here. Third down and five. Let's see if they throw it. Robinson in the game uh, quarterback now. Two receivers, far side. Now man in motion. Robinson looks. He asked for a receiver to come back to him. Going to throw it. Got a man wide open. Complete. Robinson, and that may be what the Cats needed. Robinson asked Prince Gene to come back to him. He did. And Valdosta has just hit a big one. Taking it down the McEachern 25-yard line. So here come the Cats. First and 10, Robinson going to take it. Hand it to Foster, left side. Maybe a couple of yards, two, three yards there. Three thirteen, three twelve. Valdosta with a big play here. A third and five that just hit a big long pass from Robinson to Prince Gene. Here we go now. Cats, second down. Robinson going to keep it right up the middle. Tackle made that time by McEachern's Cannon White. So here's Valdosta with another third down. Boy, they found themselves in this position a lot tonight. McEachern crowd going to come to their feet. Well, I tell you, Valdosta is to be commended for the crowd they brought tonight. 
That's a, not an easy ride. All right, Valdosta, third and about four. Four and a half, we'll call it. Robinson takes it. They're going to hand it off left side. First down. That's a great call there. Great call. Jordan Gatlin got the call that time. I love the call there, guys. Third down and five. They decided to run it, and they get it. So here's the Cats with a new set of downs now. Inside the 15. Going to give it to Gatlin again. Why not? There he goes. Inside the five, four, three-yard line. Here come the Cats. Now I think McEachern is going to try to slow this thing down. Let's see. They will. It's a timeout taken by McEachern. Lowndes down. We're getting some scores here. Lowndes is down 20 to nothing. They're over in Loganville taking on Grayson. All right, let's talk about our sponsors, guys. Can't do the game without our sponsors. Want to talk about Baker Sports and Pro Sports. Our proud to partner with ITG Next and sponsor tonight's football game. From athletes to fans, Baker's has got your apparel and sporting equipment needs covered. Thank you all for enjoying Friday Night Lights with us tonight. And don't forget to call Bakers at 904-388-8126 for any of your future equipment needs. Also, a big thanks to our friends at Georgia Farm Bureau Insurance. Georgia Farm Bureau Insurance. There's an agent near you. All you got to do is go to their website, gfbinsurance.com. You can find your town, find your zip code, and find the agent near you that can offer you all of your insurance needs. All right, here we go. Coming out of the timeout, we're under two minutes. 151 left. The Cats have got it. First and goal to go inside the five. Valdosta trying to answer the McEachern touchdown. McEachern leads to seven to nothing, but here come the Cats. Now going to Gatlin in a Wildcat. And Gatlin's going to be brought down way back. Now they'll call him down. Let's see where they spot it. So they're going to spot Gatlin way back at the nine. Tina Cummins, you sure that's Gatlin? I'm not. It's number five. There's two number fives. It's either Jordan Gatlin or Amari Tomlin. Now, one thing I don't like about these double numbers, I have no way to know who these young men are. Second down and goal now. The ball back at the nine-yard line. Robinson inside hand. Oh, what a play by Valdosta. They ran a little inside handoff that time to Prince Gene. I'm assuming it's Prince Gene, number one. We got a flag on the play. Check the call. So the touchdown will stand. I'm not sure what the penalty was. Penalty on Valdosta. It's going to be assessed on the kickoff. I think we got a call for uh, too many men running out on the field on the touchdown celebration. That will be assessed on the kickoff. So Valdosta trying to tie it up here. It's 7-6. to six. McEachern leads it with the extra point coming up now. Todd Robinson to hold. The kick is up, and it is good. So with 105 left to go in the first half, it's Valdosta 7, McEachern 7. So a pretty good game after no offense from either team for much of the first half. It was a defense-dominated first couple of quarters. And then you had McEachern strike on a long 60-yard touchdown pass and run after the catch. And give Valdosta credit. They come back down the field running tempo and running the football. And they punch it in from nine yards out. And again, guys, I know 
many of you asking about the player identification. You've got Valdosta with a lot of players changing numbers. You've got players, you've got uh, double numbers on the roster. So you guys are just going to have to help me out. I'll do the best I can. Short kickoff, going to be taking over the 40 to the 45-yard line. So McEachern going to have good field position here under one minute to go. One minute, 59 seconds left. Pat Black says, did the Cats score? Yes, they did. It's 7-7. Seven to seven. All right, here we go now, McEachern. Let's see if they can get something going with just under a minute to go in the first half. Phil Jones with you, ITG next, game of the week. We are at Cantrell Stadium up here in North Cobb County. McEachern, Valdosta, all tied at 7-7. Handoff, Campbell, full head of steam, going to take it to the 48-49, give him about three. Clock continues to run. 49, 48, now we've got a timeout taken by the McEachern Indians. That's their second of the first half. That's going to give us a chance to tell you about our friends at Georgia Farm Bureau Insurance. Guys, if you live in Valdosta, you know how important insurance is, don't you? We all found out. Our offices and homes, a lot of us live in the Valdosta area. Although we are a statewide company, a lot of us found out what a major hurricane can do. So Georgia Farm Bureau Insurance can certainly help you out with all of your insurance needs. Remember, they offer home, auto, life, fam, uh, farm, and renter's insurance, which is something a lot of people found to be helpful. To find an agent near you, go to their website, gfbinsurance.com. That's gfbinsurance.com. Also, a big thanks to our friends at Baker Sports. Coming up later to, uh, in this game, we're going to name a player of the game for both teams, and that player, each player, is going to receive a free set of shoulder pads from Baker Sports. And I'll ask you guys to help me identify the player of the game once we get late in the third or fourth quarter. We'll start trying to identify the player of the game for both teams. And, again, I'll ask your input on that. Okay, 49 seconds left coming out of the timeout. It's second and seven. We'll see if McEachern decides to put it up in the air or if they're going to try to just run some clock here. Let's see. Kenny will take it. They're going to throw it. Throws far side. In and out of the hands of the receiver. Incomplete. Two things. That's incomplete. You don't gain any yardage and you stop the clock. I think if you're McEachern, you don't want to give the ball back to Valdosta. If for nothing else, you want to at least run the clock out here and try to go into halftime tied. You don't want to give the ball back to Valdosta and give them a chance for any momentum at the end of the first half. But let's see what McEachern decides to do. Indians up to the line, third and seven, 46 seconds to go. In the first half in a tie game, they will run it. Campbell trying to get outside. He'll dip it back inside. Nothing doing. And now Valdosta going to call a timeout to stop the clock. The timeout is called. Valdosta. So Valdosta takes a timeout now. That'll stop the clock. 41 seconds left. Third down and seven. Guys, want to remind you. You can check out my live show every Monday at 5 o'clock. It's called Extra Point with Phil Jones, where we talk about the football that goes on around the state of Georgia. We'll talk about this game. We'll talk about a lot of other games. Also going to go over our top 25 rankings that yours truly puts together each week. And our pick six that, again, I put that together. I picked tonight's game. Cedar Grove, Colquitt, I picked that game. By the way, Colquitt, 44-28 was my score in that one. Mill Creek Park View, Buford, Marietta. By the way, big thanks to our friends at Buford. We were there last week 
for the Buford game. Buford Carver, Atlanta. Had a big time there. Big thanks to our friends at Car uh, Buford. They always make us feel right at home. Great program, great people. Great friends of ITG Next, the Buford Wolves. Just getting it off is Rodriguez for McEachern. And again, back deep to make the fair catch, Eli Lewis, who has had a busy night tonight. So he'll make the fair catch. So let's see what Valen Austin decides to do here. Now you've got 35 seconds left. Valdosta's got two timeouts left. And wouldn't be surprised maybe to see Valdosta try to run this thing. Or I'm sorry, try to pass this thing. Let's see what they decide to do. Cat's going to come out here in a 7-7 seven seven game. Robinson. He's a good-looking quarterback. I had a great interview with Todd about right at the beginning of the football season. Robinson on a quarterback sneak. Actually, a quarterback draw. Robinson going to take it out to the 32-yard line. 28 seconds left. Now the clock runs. 20 seconds left to go in the half. Robinson looks. Robinson going to toss it out in the flats. It's complete. Receiver trying to get out of bounds, and he will. Just shy of midfield. 11 seconds to go in the half. 11 seconds. Don't forget, coming up at halftime, we'll let you take a look at the halftime entertainment as the Marching Cats from Valdosta are going to take the field first tonight. You can see them across the way there getting ready. 11 seconds to go. Let's see if Robinson decides to uncork a long one here. Clock has stopped. Let's see what we got. Indians are going to take their third and final timeout. That'll give us a chance to tell you about our friends at Baker Sports. Baker Sports and Pro Sports are proud to be the presenting sponsor between McEachern and Valdosta tonight. Hey, athletes and fans alike, between Bakers and Pro Sports, you can get your gear covered. Whether you're cheerleader, football, fan, weekend warrior, Baker Sports and Pro Sports has got you covered. And they're a one-stop shop for top-quality sports apparel and equipment. Take this number down, and the next time you get a chance to call Bakers, do so at 904-388-8126. That's 904-388-8126 for all your sporting good needs. Also, big thanks to Georgia Farm Bureau Insurance. You can get all of your insurance needs through our friends at Georgia Farm Bureau Insurance. Both presenting sponsors all season long of the ITG Next Game of the Week. Okay, here we go now. you got 11 seconds left. Valdosta, first and 10. They're just shy of midfield. McEachern, probably going to go into some kind of prevent, you would think. Empty backfield for Robinson, who takes the snap. Looks. Got plenty of time. Now he's going to be chased out of the pocket. Robinson running. Going to go out of bounds at about the 45-yard line. Two seconds left. Two seconds. So Valdosta will have one chance to throw it to the end zone on a Hail Mary. All right, so here we go. Going to be two seconds left. Let's see what we got here. Referees are talking something over. Kareem Reed is pitching his case down there. I don't know what this is about. I think Kareem Reed is thinking that the clock may should have run out. I just, I'm just guessing. <laughs> Bottom line is two seconds left. Two seconds. Now Kareem Reed wants to talk to the crew chief who's explaining something to him here. Thanks so much for watching our live feed tonight. It's our live ITG Next Game of the Week where we bring you great football action all season long. 
two weeks, we're going to bring you two of the hottest teams in the state, two of the best young quarterbacks, Carrollton and East Coweta from Sharpsburg. It'll be two weeks from now. All right, so here we go. you got two seconds left. Valdosta, I'm sure, going to throw a Hail Mary to the end zone here, you would think. Here we go. The clock hits zero. The horn sounds. Robinson going to fire it long downfield. Got a man wide open. Not sure how that happened. He's going to be brought down short of the end zone. Robinson took a huge hit as he threw the football. Robinson is still down. And I'm not sure how that young man got so wide open. But he is going to be brought down about two yards shy of the end zone, and that's where the clock and the half will end. Robinson is still down as the medical staff from Valdosta out there to check on him. Now Robinson is up, and he'll come off the field under his own power. Maybe just got the breath knocked out of him. That's good news to see that young man get up and he'll walk over and join his teammates as they all hit to the locker room in a seven, the seven game. Wow, McEachern gave up a huge pass. I can't believe that receiver got so open. And man, uh, they come within a yard and a half of scoring, but McEachern did what they had to do. They keep him out of the end zone and we are 7-7 seven to seven at halftime. It was two big plays in this first half that brought the each team a touchdown. And that's really been the name of the game so far in this game where we find ourselves tied at 7-7. Seven to seven. All right. All right, guys. Welcome back. Getting you ready for the second half. I hope you guys enjoyed the halftime entertainment. That was two entertaining bands and I tell you first time I've seen the Valdosta band this year actually I guess first time I've seen them uh in a while well they are some kind of entertaining congratulations both marching bands tonight for both schools whipping it up at halftime great halftime entertainment all right guys so uh, let's uh yeah guys I'm, I'm I apologize for the issues we're, we're I promise you we're working on it uh Annie Burgess so maybe we can get this unfrozen. We'll try to get this going for you guys, and we do apologize for the issues. Continue to let us know uh, how we're doing with the live stream, if you would. Second half kick. Goes into and out of the end zone. So Valdosta. Waylon Polk checking in from St. Louis, Missouri. All right, guys, here we go. Seven to seven game as we get ready to start the second half. Valdosta came within a yard of taking the lead there at the end of the second half, but not able to punch it in. Here we go to start the second half of play. There goes Robinson, big play. He fumbled the football. Robinson fumbled it, and McEachern is going to recover the fumble. Valdosta has coughed it up on the first play of the second half. And McEachern has recovered the fumble. So, Robinson with a big run, and he fumbles it at the end of the play. And McEachern will come away with the first break of the second half, and they've got it. First and 10 in a 7-7 game at the Valdosta 40-yard line, 42-yard line. Wow, unbelievable. <laughs> All right, here we go now, McEachern. They've got the ball now. Are you kidding me? Of course, they've not been able to get much offense, so they're going to go under center here with their quarterback, trying something a little bit different, play action. They're going to throw it long downfield. Got a man open, complete at the one-yard line. McEachern just hit a bomb. Forty-three yard bomb to number four. 
Robert Eccles. And here's the Indians. First and goal to go from the one. They're going under center. They went under center on the first play. Now they're going to go back into the pistol and going to hand it off. He'll take it to about the half-yard line. Bring up second down. Boy, Valdosta ever needed to bow their back on defense. It's now incredible. Second and goal to go, McEachern. Ball sits at about the half-yard line. The Indians going to spread it out a little bit here. Going to take and going to hand it. Touchdown, McEachern. It's a touchdown for McEachern. McEachern with a touchdown. It comes at 10-44. And they go up now. McEachern does 13-7, trying to take advantage of a huge second-half turnover by Valdosta. They take it down and score on a long bomb. And now here comes the point-after attempt from Rodriguez. The kick is up. The kick is good. McEachern goes up. Are you kidding me? Now can Valdosta respond? Valdosta got the ball. Robinson Todd made a great run. Had a huge game. Took it out over the 40, but he fumbled it. And then McEachern, they decided to come out, and they put Jaden Kenny under center. And on a play action, he throws a 43-yard bomb to Robert Eccles, their leading receiver. And then two plays later, they punch it in on a touchdown run from Jerry and Campbell. 14-7, the score. McEachern leads it. So we didn't see much offense at all from either team. Really didn't see much from McEachern, but they have come out now and they have showed some explosiveness here on this play here to start the second half. Rodriguez now going to boot it away. Man, he's got a foot. And he's going to put this one back at the one-yard line. And nothing doing. McEachern special teamers getting down there aggressively to make the tackle. And, boy, now you can see the momentum from the Indians now. They're fired up. And they'll go on defense and try to protect this lead that their offense just gave them. Wow, what a turn of events here. Great game at Cantrell Stadium. ITG next game of the week. All right, here we go. Cat's going to come back. A lot of game left. Mike Sorensen just put it very succinctly. You got a lot of game left. Indians lead it, 14 to 7. 10 34, basically the entire second half left. All right, guys, if you can hear me, <clears throat> welcome back. Sorry for all the problems. You've got McEachern leading it 21 to 7. When we lost contact with you, Valdosta was trying to go in to score for what would have been a tying touchdown. They fumbled. McEachern took over, and McEachern has hit two consecutive touchdown passes. Running play, Valdosta. <clears throat> Short gain for the Cats. And right now, Valdosta with their backs against the wall. They trail it 21-7. Again, we do apologize for the issues, guys. Hopefully you can hear me. Valdosta Austin now 412, 411 to go in the third. Here's a pass play. Taken out to about the 29-yard line. Big hit that time. Up ends the receiver. Number 16. I'm guessing that's Mark McCoggle. So it's going to bring up now a third down. Third down. 
Third down. Third and about a yard. Cats need just a yard to get the first. Robinson now going to redirect traffic. He'll come back. Ready to go. Snap. Robinson gives it to the back. First down. Tackle made right there at about the 25-yard line. But it's going to be a first down for Valdosta. Annie Burgess, if you can hear me, I hope you can hear me. Guys, let me know if you can hear me. As we're trying to get this game back up and up for you because it is a great game. Robinson on the carry. Valdosta trying to get back in this game. Three minutes to go in the third. Valdosta now with a new set of downs. First and ten. Hand, no, Robinson going to keep it. And he'll be brought down at the 45. Gets a yard on the play. Second down and nine. Valdosta's got it. 242, 241 to go in the third. Snap, Robinson going to hand it. Running room right up the middle for Foster. He'll take it to midfield. Second down, Valdosta. Actually, the yard marker says third. I think it's, <laughs> I don't know what down it is. Yard marker says third, scoreboard says second. Either way, it's a first down now for Valdosta. They just hit a crossing route. There's another fumble. There's another fumble. Valdosta has coughed it up. And McEachern's got it. Wow, unbelievable. Just when it looks like Valdosta's going to get something going, they fumble. Oh, my goodness gracious. Right now, Valdosta, this has been a game of turnovers. Wow. Unbelievable. So, after the turnover. Valdosta, another turnover. They look like they were had a good drive going, but no for not. They turn it over again. McEachern's got it. They've got the momentum. They got the ball. They lead it 21 to 7. Play action. Kenny going to throw it again. Oh, he had a man wide open, and he overshot him at midfield. Trying to get this thing back up and going for you guys. So it's second down. Again, you're just joining us. Valdosta with another turnover. They've had two consecutive turnover on drives. It looked like they were going to take it in. Hopefully we can keep this stream up and going now. We've got a Valdosta man now that has just gone down the field. Maybe cramping. And that's exactly what it looks like it is. That'll give us a chance to tell you about my friends, our friends, at Georgia Farm Bureau Insurance. Guys, if you're looking for insurance, whether it's renter's insurance, homeowner's insurance, life insurance, health insurance, whatever, Georgia Farm Bureau Insurance has got you covered. Go to their website, guys, gfbinsurance.com for all your insurance needs. Also, big thanks to our friends at Baker Sports, who welcome all football fanatics. Welcome to Friday Night Lights. Friday Night Lights brought to you by Baker Sports and Pro Sports, together serving as your one-stop shop for top-quality sports equipment. Give Baker Sports a call, 904-388-8126, for all your sporting good needs. And thank you for enjoying this gridiron spectacle of a game that right now sees McEachern leading it 21-7. 21-7, McEachern with the lead. They've got the ball. 
snap, handoff, not much, running into the teeth of the Valdosta defense, gaining about a yard. Going to bring a third and long for McEachern. Clock runs at 133, 132. Still got plenty of time for Valdosta to get back in this game. I'm Phil Jones. You're watching the ITG Next Game of the Week. Apologies for the issues. Trying to bring you as much of the game as we can now that we've got it back up and running. Hang in there with us. Here we go. Third and long for McEachern. Kenny, the quarterback, will take it, looks, throws, complete out here in the flats, but going to be brought down short of the first down. They'll bring him down way short of the first down up at about the 30-yard line. So McEachern will have to punt it away. Fourth down, 40 seconds left. There's about seven seconds difference in the play clock and the game clock. 30 seconds to go in the third with McEachern leading at 21 to seven. Guys, listen, Valdosta, one big play from getting back in this game. So Cat fans, do not despair. Your team has got a lot of football left to play. Rodriguez gonna try to punt this one away. Just gets it off. Man, Valdosta coming with a heavy rush. What a foot this young man's got. Ball's gonna roll out of bounds. Valdosta close to <laughs> blocking that punt again. And they'll mark him out at the, or they'll mark the ball out at the 39-yard line, and that's where Valdos is going to put it in play with six seconds left in the third quarter. Let me know where you're watching the game from. <laughs> Jacob O'Neill, someone get a hold of Elon and tell him to give Phil some Starlink. <laughs> I don't think it's that, brother, but we are trying to work on it. All right, here we go. Valdosta with six seconds to go in the third quarter. They trail it 21 to 7. Still a lot of time left to play in this game. I tell you, I'm impressed with the Valdosta crowd that has driven up tonight for this thing. Running play, running back's going to stumble for about a yard loss. And that is going to do it. <laughs> That's going to do it for the third quarter. We'll go to quarter number four with your score. McEachern, 21, Valdosta, 7, the ITG next game of the week. Guys, don't forget Monday night. We'll try to bring you the extra point show with yours truly as I'll be talking about this game. How's it going to wind up? We'll be talking about all the football coming in from around the state. That's extra point with yours truly, Phil Jones, every Monday at 5 o'clock. And we try to go to 5 uh, till 6.30. By the way, the former athletic director for Milton, my buddy, Gary Sly Silvestri, longtime athletic director at Milton, is going to be joining me on Monday show. <laughs> Jamal Harris, no, it's not that, brother. I promise you, none of that stuff. <laughs> All right, here we go to start the fourth quarter. Valdosta has got it. Second down, 11. Foster's uh, split. Uh, tripped on that last play, which was the last play of the third. Here we go to start the fourth quarter. Running play, far side, nothing doing. McEachern defense going to wrap him up for a loss of about five yards. So a big loss for the Valdosta offense on that one. Guys, y'all stay with us here. Stay with us for this game. Valdosta, third and a mile. Robinson, the quarterback, three receivers here to the near side. They're setting up the screen. He's got a lot of room out there. Still on his feet. Big play. 
Valdostas just hit a big screen all the way down to McEachern, 25. So they caught McEachern with a heavy rush. Great play call from Valdosta on the screen that time. And that's going to give Valdosta a new set of downs deep in McEachern territory at the McEachern 24. Here come the Cats trying to climb back in this game. And I think we're going to have an offsides on McEacher. Defensive end over there got a little bit of a head start. So that's going to move Valdosta up five yards. So move it up five yards now to the 20. 11 minutes to go in the game. 11 minutes. Guys, i got to be honest with you. Valdosta has moved the football tonight. So the, the, they have, again, just not been able to put it in. Fumbles, turnovers, mistakes have, have hurt them. If they can hang on to the football, continue to move it, your cats are going to get back in this thing. Packers up 36-21, says Michael Jarvis. Guys, it has been a crazy season. Here's Valdosta now. Robinson, plenty of time, throws it across the middle. He overshot a receiver. He had a receiver wide open at the five, and he overshot the receiver. I guess that's Brantley. They're going to bring up now a second down. Five needed for the first. 10.56 to go in the game. McEachern leads it 21-7. to seven. Still a lot of time left in this one. I'm Phil Jones. You're watching the ITG next game of the week from Cantrell Stadium. Here we go, Valdosta. Second down, Robinson. Play action, looks, looks, chased out of the pocket. Going to throw it up toward the end zone. Nobody's there. Threw it away. Kareem Reed here on the near sideline wanted an intentional grounding that time, but not going to get the call. Third down and five needed for the Cats. So obviously you're in four down territory here. Third down, obviously you're in fourth down territory. So if you're a Valdosta fan, you've got two downs to make five yards. 10.48 to go in the game. McEachern leads it 21 to seven. Here we go, Valdosta, third down. Two receivers, far side, one to the near side, one back. That's going to get the call there. Nothing doing. Nothing doing. He got back to the line of scrimmage, and that's about it. That was Foster on the carry, and he got back to the line of scrimmage. So now it's fourth down. I'm sure Coach Felton going to go for this. Not going to see any field goal team out here. Somebody said plenty of time left. Give him six. You will not hear this guy say that. Here we go. Fourth down. Fourth down, two receivers, far side, one here to the near side. Now, about off the scores, I'll certainly call it. Here we go, Robinson rolls, near side, looks, Robinson looks, 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 throws. Batted down incomplete. It's another Valdosta turnover. Another Valdosta drive will end deep in McEachern territory. And McEachern's going to take over, and yet again, Another promising Valdosta drive will go for naught. Now you'll see McEachern go back on offense, 9.57. If you're Kareem, uh, Kareem Reed, first year McEachern head football coach, I would think you're going to see him try to run some clock here. Will Smith thinks so. Will Smith says McEachern run the clock out. Let's see what we get here. Kenny is the quarterback. And Kareem Reed is hot. 
So McEachern, despite winning, they've had problems getting the playoff tonight. I mean, they've run that play clock down close to zero. And right now, Kareem Reed is hot at his staff. I think at everybody. So we've got a timeout. That'll give you a chance to tell you our, our a chance to tell you about our, our sponsors. Easy for me to say. First, I want to tell you about our friends at Georgia Farm Bureau Insurance. Guys, if you're looking for home, auto, life, farm, health, or what about renter's insurance? A lot of you in, impacted by the local hurricane. If you were a renter, you may have been lost out in the cold. Of course, you have a landlord that can take care of things. But still, you got to be protected. Whatever insurance you need, Georgia Farm Bureau Insurance has got it. Go to their website, gfbinsurance.com. Also, big thanks to our other sponsor, Baker Sports. All right, coming out of the timeout now, McEachern, 9.57 to go in the game. They've got it first and 10. They just held Valdosta on what was a long and promising Valdosta drive. Kenny, so much for running out the clock. Going to throw it long, incomplete. Pass was off the mark. And I got to tell you, uh, I, that one I don't get. But I guess McEachern wants to be aggressive here, so. <laughs> Mr. Producer liked that one. Indians up to the line. Running play, left side, going to get close to a, he's got about six yards. So, going to bring up third down. Again, McEachern's run two plays, and they, and they stopped the clock. That, that's not what you want. <laughs> you got third down and three now. I mean, McEachern, you, the name of the game is to run that clock. You got to run the clock, guys. Come on. Third down and three. I would run the football here, but again, it's not me that's out there coaching. Third down, let's see what they decide to do here. Play action, they're gonna throw it. Complete, like I said, they need to throw the football. <laughs> it's a first down, McEachern. So, move the chains. It's a first down for the Indians. 9.37, 9.36, 9.35 left to go in the game. McEachern with a new set of downs. I got to be honest with you. Jaden Kenny has looked like a completely different quarterback in the second half. He'll go under center now. And I think Brantley's going to jump off sides. Let's see. Boy, Brantley gets a huge jump every time. He is some kind of specimen of a football player, man. Let me tell you. He is incredible to watch. He was a little bit quick on that one. So that's going to move the clock up, or I'm sorry, going to move the ball up five yards. It'll be first and five, 9.15 to go. I think Brantley does such a good job of anticipating the, the snap count. He's, he's not only athletically gifted, but he's a smart player. He is something to watch, guys, I'll be honest with you. So first and five, 9.05 to go in the game. Nine minutes. Now McEachern looks like they're set and content to run clock here. Nine minutes, 8.59, 8.58. McEachern probably going to try to let this clock run all the way down. Now they'll snap it with about 15, about 10 seconds left on the play clock. Seven seconds on the play clock. Boy, they are letting that thing run down. They'll snap it. They'll run it. Not much. That was Jerry on Campbell, J.J. Campbell. He was their leading rusher in the Corky Kell Classic, Corky Kell Dave Hunter Classic. It was he was running wild. He put McEachern out to a huge lead over Brookwood. He gets hurt, comes out of the game. Offense falters. 
Brookwood comes back and wins it. Campbell has been out three weeks, but he returned last week, and we're seeing him here tonight and showing why he is such a good running back. McEachern letting this play clock now run all the way down. Pass play, complete. Makes a man miss. McEachern's got a running back streaking down the field all the way down to the Valdosta 25. It's a huge gain, and it's another McEachern first down. Wow. Are you kidding me? McEachern made a change with their offensive coordinator prior to the Tucker game. They come out and they scored 49 points. That after being able to score only 34 points in their first four games. So the change has certainly helped the team, and they are looking like a completely different team. Handoff. Cat's going to bring him down for a loss in the backfield on this one. Seven minutes to go in the game. Seven minutes to go in the game. McEachern just hit a big play. McEachern hit a big play to take it down to the Valdosta 25, and right now they're letting that play clock run. They're letting the play clock run down all the way down to about seven seconds on every play before they snap it. And that's what they're doing here, and you can't blame Kareem Reed. Play clock under 10, 8, 7. Now we're going to get, let's see, do we have an offsides? We do. Valdosta going to jump offsides, and that's going to give McEachern five yards. So right now you got Valdosta guessing on the snap count. So move it up five yards for McEachern, who leads it 21 to seven. Right now, the Indians have the ball and they've got the momentum. Clock is running, 622, 621, 619. McEachern is in no hurry to snap it. Kareem Reed is looking at the play clock and the game clock and he'll instruct his players when to snap it. Now you've got Kenny, the quarterback, who's just now getting in the shotgun. Six minutes to go. Play clock under 10. 5.50 to go in the game. And we've got whistles now. Check the clock, or check the call. Valdosta, offsides. I think that's the third consecutive offsides on Valdosta. Three consecutive offsides on Valdosta. There's my buddy, Obadiah Farley, watching the game. What's up, Obadiah? He's the Thomas County Central number one fan. All right, guys, so we've got to come up with our ITG Next player of the game. If you guys can hear me, I've lost my feed now. So if you guys can hear me, our ITG Next live feed, ITG Next Game of the Week. Remember, every week we pick two players as our player of the game. Again, both players of the game will receive a free pair of shoulder pads, compliments of our friends from Baker Sports. I think at this moment, you probably got to give the player of the game for McEachern. 
to Jaden Kenny, but I'll, I'll hold off on that. Now, you Valdosta fans, I'm not, I'm not sure if I can get your comments right now, but try to pick a Valdosta player of the game. So, second down, coming out of the – after the timeout, 521 left to go in the game. McEachern leads it 21-7. to They're going to run it left side. Running back, still on his feet. That's number 10, Jerrion Campbell. Actually, I don't know. I may have to give it to Jerrion. So I'm down to those two for McKeach and for Valdosta. Kind of hard not to give it, not to give it to uh, Eric Brantley, who has certainly done his part. Though I don't know. I gotta, I gotta see here. We're under five minutes to go in the game. Under five minutes to go in the game. So I'm not able to see your comments anymore. So if you can give me a player of the game suggestion, maybe we can find it. McEachern with a new set of downs. Quarterback keeper taking it around the end. It's a touchdown, McEachern. And that's going to pretty much do it from Cantrell Stadium tonight. Twenty-seven to seven. Twenty-seven to seven. It's all McEachern at this point. So now I've got your comments back up. Time is 4.33 to go in the game. Rodriguez to try another point after attempt to put McEachern up three touchdowns. It's up. It's good. 4.33 left to go in the football game right now. McEachern completely in control. It's the Indians, 28, Valdosta 7, ITG next game of the week. Phil Jones with you. Don't forget, we'll be back next week. Our location to be determined next week. We've got some great games that the, the high schools have given us approval to come do their game. We're going to try to make a decision on Monday. So be sure to check out my show on Monday, Extra Point with Phil Jones. That comes on at 5 o'clock, and we'll announce our game of the week location and teams next week. Now, on October the 5th, we're going to be in Sharpsburg for a barn burner of a game. East Coweta and Carrollton. This will be our first look at Juju Lewis for Carrollton. Last week, we saw Dylan Riola, the nation's number one quarterback. So we're giving you the best of high school football all season long. It's part of the ITG Next Game of the Week. And tonight, we have seen one that I don't think anybody saw coming, guys. Come on, be honest with me. McEachern completely in control in this one. They lead Valdosta 28-7. Here we go. Line drive kick will go in and out of the end zone for a touchback. So we're going to see Valdosta now. Take over, first and 10, and they're going to try to find some kind of magic here with 433. Guys, listen, I've seen crazier things. If Valdos can somehow get a quick strike here, get an onside kick, get the ball back, get a touchdown, get another onside kick, you never know. So here we go. Somebody said, don't come to Brooks. We may just do that. <laughs> Trip receivers here to the near side for the Cats. Robinson. Oh, my goodness. Oh, boy. Robinson just threw a slant to number 15. 
And my goodness. Corey Fudge got belted there by number 14, Shamara Hall. Luckily, he's okay. His helmet went flying off. What a hit. Robinson going to launch it downfield. Complete. No. Is it complete or incomplete? No. Number three dropped it. That looked like it was a complete pass, and he drops it. Wow. That could have been a big play. Shakivius Wright had it. So, players of the game, since I can see your comments, guys. Mike Sorensen said the quarterback laid his own man out. Yeah, that's one way of looking at it, Mike, for sure. Third down. You can bet McEachern going to pin their ears back on this one. Robinson throws across the middle. Dropped. Incomplete. So now you've got Valdosta with a fourth down. Fourth and four, and it's come down to this. Valdosta has got to convert here. Yeah, Maya Brown says definitely Eric for Valdosta. <laughs> Mike Sorensen said the marching cats player of the game. Mike, you keeping me in stitches tonight, brother. <laughs> Timeout has been called. My buddy Billy Watson is checking out the game tonight. Again, ITG next game of the week. Big thanks to our sponsors that make this game and our games all year long. The ITG next game of the week possible. Our friends at Baker Sports. We want to remind you that Baker Sports and Pro Sports proud to partner with ITG next. Sponsoring tonight's game. From athletes to fans, Bakers has got your apparel and sporting equipment needs covered. Thank you all for enjoying Friday Night Lights with us tonight. Don't forget, call Baker Sports at 904-388-8126 for any of your future equipment needs. Speaking of equipment, I'm going to be announcing here the player of the game for both teams. Each player will be given a free set of shoulder pads. Compliments of our friends at Baker Sports. So Valdosta has elected to punt instead of go for it. So Valdosta just going to punt it away. McEachern had nobody back deep. They weren't expecting a Valdosta punt. And the ball is going to roll dead at the 34-yard line, and that's where McEachern will take over. Each team has a timeout left. So Valdosta has one timeout. McEachern also has one, although they have no need to call a timeout. Now, one of the McEachern coaches is angry about something, and I'm not sure what that's about. Coach, take it easy, man. Your team's up 28-7. to seven. Todd Daniel has just tuned in and said, really, 28-7? to seven? That's right, uh, Todd. 28-7, to seven, and I think that's got a lot of people shocked. Sean Dragon wants to know how many minutes are left. We've got 346, Sean. Three minutes, 46 seconds left. So, hey, still got time. Here's a handoff. So my player of the game for McEachern is the man that just run the football. My player of the game for McEachern is Jarion Campbell, Jarion J.J. Campbell. He's my player of the game for McEachern. Who Sean Dragon, it says S E A N Dragon. Who asked how many minutes are left? <laughs> Can't be fun of the old ball part. Three minutes to go in the game. Another running play from our McEachern player of the game, J.J. Campbell. Our Valdosta player of the game is going to go to Eric Brantley. So you've got two minutes, 41 seconds left. Again, Valdosta trying desperately to get something going here with a few minutes left. And now you're really starting to run out of time. Meyer Brown says at least he's got faith in y'all. Listen, guys, I've seen football. I've called a lot of football. 
I have seen crazy things. You guys remember that Wintersville Classic? How many of you were heading to the parking lot when it looked like Valdosta was done? That game at the Concrete Palace. I'm trying to remember what year that was. Valdosta scored what, guys? 14 points in like two minutes? Now, you guys remember, nobody thought Valdosta had a, had a chance in that one. Ruby Smith says, yes, I remember that. That was crazy, guys. Crazy things can happen. Never say never. Play to the final whistle. Third down, 249 left to go in this one. McEachern, Campbell going to run it left side. First down and more. So it was third and five, and he got about six, seven yards. Campbell did, and that now will do it. That's going to give out Austin. I'm sorry, going to give McEachern a first down. 2011, says Dalton Smith. 2011 was the year. Half that stadium had uh, emptied and was heading to the cars when Valdosta made one of the most improbable comebacks in high school football history in the state of Georgia and anywhere for that matter. 2.09 left to go. McEachern with a new set of downs. Handoff left side. It's pretty much all academic at this point with McEachern leading it 28 to 7. Bernadette Robinson says it's going to be a crazy Wintersville Classic in two weeks. Absolutely it will be. Mike Sorensen, thanks for the broadcast. Y'all be careful getting home. We will be. We'll be back about 3.30. <laughs> but we've got to stop at Bucky's. <laughs> Can't go by Bucky's and not stop, brother. Can't do that. Don't forget, you can watch my show Monday, 5 o'clock, right here. Extra Point with Phil Jones. We talk about football all over the state. And we'll look forward to having you guys on board with us on Monday. 1.20 to go in the game. Second down, McEachern. Running play, going to lose a couple of yards. Chun Lee says, in for a show for this Wintersville game. Yeah, that's always a great game. It's going to be at, um, we're at um, Baysmore Hotter Stadium this year. Guys, let me tell you, last year was my first Wintersville Classic in years. Uh, it, it was incredible. It was unbelievable. What an atmosphere. Throw out the records. It doesn't matter. We're under a minute to go here. All McEachern, they'll come out of here with a victory. Is McEachern now going to go into the victory formation? We came to Cantrell Stadium tonight. I got to be honest with you, was expecting a defensive battle. What we got was that, but a good bit of offense from McEachern. And a shocker from Cantrell Stadium tonight. It's McEachern 28, Valdosta 7. Good grief. Didn't see this one coming, I'll be honest with you. That's why they play the game. With the win, McEachern takes their second victory in a row. And let me tell you something. This team is a completely different team than the one you saw in the first four games. For the Valdosta Wildcats, it's their second loss of the year after dropping their opener against Massillon. Valdosta will fall to four and two on the season. The good news is for both these teams, it's not a region game. Cat fans, you got to remember that. And again, we do celebrate tonight the 25th year of remembering the 1998 state championship between these two teams on a night when Carlos Gatlin ran wild. 
Mike Sorensen says we'll see you Monday at 5. Indeed, we will. What a game tonight, guys, especially if you're a McEachern fan. Boy, look at the Indians going down there to the north end zone to celebrate with their student section. What a great sight that is, watching the Indians run the field. And what a great win for first-year head coach Kareem Reed for Valdosta and Shelton Felton. They'll try to regroup and get ready for next week. I want to thank everybody uh, for your patience tonight. Guys, we have uh, brought, brought you guys a clear-cut, stellar stream broadcast all season long. From time to time when you're doing this and you rely on Wi-Fi and you're kind of at the mercy of Wi-Fi, it just, things, things happen sometimes, guys, and we apologize to y'all for the issues. We thought, though, that at least to start the game, there at the end we were able to give you bits and pieces of a pretty good football game. And again, we will get it right. That is our promise to you. Again, the players of the game tonight. Eric Brantley for Valdosta. And for McEacher, Jerry on J.J. Campbell. They'll each get a nice pair of shoulder pads. Compliments of our friends at Baker Sports and Pro Sports. Speaking of Baker Sports, Pro Sports, I want to thank them for their sponsorship of tonight's game and all of our games all year long. And want to thank our friends at Georgia Farm Bureau Insurance. They are a year-long sponsor as well. Don't forget, Monday, 5 o'clock. Monday at 5 o'clock, extra point with Phil Jones. Be sure to join us then as I'll bring you all the action from this game and games from all over the state. We'll also give you an updated top 25 ranking next week. It's going to be tough for the Cats to stay in the top 25. McEachin, will they have done enough tonight to find their way into the 4A through 7A to, uh, top 25. I'll work on that tonight on the way home and this weekend. So, again, your final score tonight from Cantrell Stadium and the ITG Next Game of the Week. All McEachern tonight, Indians win it 28-7. to For cameraman and videographer Sean Perry, I'm Phil Jones saying thank you guys for your patience tonight. We'll get it right next week. Again, remember Monday, we'll tell you where our game is for next Friday. In two weeks, we'll bring you Carrollton and East Coweta. So looking forward to many more great games of the week right here at ITG Next.